Boss. Yeah, we back boss. at it, man. Boss. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. It's a unique hustle, nigga, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely official, Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Hey man, say man, this guy right here, man. We had him on the show when we was in Cali, man. But hey, man, he come to visit me here in Texas, man. Hey man, I got my boy, man, Melvin Farmers in the building, man. How man, you what's going on? Man, man, it's just good to have you, man. Good to sit down again, man. Yeah, it really is. What you been up to, man? Oh man, you know how we do it. We just sit in corners trying to uh, give back to the community and help our community and our people and our race, uh, and just doing what we do, man. Man, so, you know, uh, man, I, I, you, I know you just got in, but Texas uh, weather compared to California, what's the difference, man? Uh, well, uh, during the day, it's humid. <laughs> and then at night, it gets pretty nippy. <laughs> so I found that out last night. Yeah. So the weather can change. You get all four seasons here. We only get a little uh, hot and it's warm, then a little bit of cold. You didn't see our snow as well, huh? Yes, sir. <laughs> What do you think about it, Steph? That snow came once in the blue moon here in Texas. <laughs> mm-hmm. we, we, I, and you were lucky enough to be here. Yes, I was blessed enough to be exactly. here and got stuck three or four or five days. That was during, uh, what was that, Valentine's mm-hmm. weekend when I, uh, that occurred. People wow. People here haven't seen that in no more, huh? decades. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, about a decade. Don't try to say decades. decades. In one decade. We we get it every now and then. So, man, just uh, so... I always say, man, so far as the, I, I always talk, go, it go, always go back to the youth with me, man. What is the plan? How do we, uh, how do we gain control over uh, getting our youth to understand what we stand is trying to make things better, you know, in today's society? Well, as far as the inner cities, these uh, pockets of poverty that Obama called them or uh, uh, rat infested, as Trump called them, Baltimore, at the end of the day, I think it's uh, three areas uh, that need to be addressed to where you have a captive audience of youth. Uh, that's parks and recreations, the juvenile justice system, and the schools, unified school districts. Because you got, uh, it's phases that you go through, 13, 14, 15, you sow in your oats, 16, 17, 18 in this game, you're starting to get a little money. Then as it go, you start going to jail, the penitentiary yard or the graveyard, usually at the end of the day. And you have to create a dialogue amongst older cats warring factions to where these youths that are at the lower level, uh, junior high, high school, uh, they'll be able not to see this image where to be ingrained in them, because we have uh, in Los Angeles a generational uh, wealth of uh, hate and revenge, and that doesn't die easily. Wow. So those heal, those wounds does not heal. A uh, family member that's lost a loved one never will be at peace, and a loved one is gone so when the holidays and this and that. So at the end of the day, uh, this nation needs some healing. Wow. Nation definitely needs some healing, man. But we talk about the different ways of how we can heal, the different ways of how to bring um, the different gangs, the different people together. Because at the end of the day, especially as us black folks, we're all just we're all black people. So they create all of these different categories to cause division among us. And how can we not think about that and just look at you as okay, you're you're my brother. You know what I mean? I should love you because you're my brother. How can we work together? Just like, and I always go back to this. I saw in the paper about um, the group of fathers. I think it was in Louisiana because they were having a lot of um, fights and um, killings in the school. And these men got up and said, you know what, let's get and come into the school. Yeah. Let's have a presence in the school because as fathers, we are fathers, to show some of these kids um, what a positive father looks like because a lot of, some kids don't know that, don't know even what a father really looks like because they were raised by a single mom. So just to have that influence in their life. So how can more men 
get up and do that or more women get up and do f for females? Well, speaking of fathers, uh, November 21st at the Anilato Stadium, uh, we'll be hosting a Fathers in Hip Hop uh, Awards show where we're uh, trying to educate uh, that community and others across the nation about the role of a father or absentee father to where uh, they'll be saying uh, how hip hop has influenced and created a culture to where we must start uh, this decimating information to these youths where they see another image. Uh, Cause this ain't 48 hours in this street right. where it ends and it's over with. This stuff continues daily on a constant basis. But once again, we can sit and talk about it all we want on social media, audio, video, or print, any way you want to do it. But at the end of the day, unless you can get those that are in opposition to create dialogue, that's the role that I can play. I don't have all the sense. And, you know, if we all come together and we formulate an ideal and we got a plan, I think things can change to where once they see the power that we have, because our number one investment is us, mm. yourself, your community, where you grew up. You don't have no outside uh, investment, but all the time we have people uh, speaking on inner city problems that have no vested interest in the subject that they're speaking I, on. Well, I, I, and I'm glad you said that. I was listening last night, and I, I listened to Vlad, and I listened to uh, uh, No Jumper 22, Adam 22, who have big platforms in California. And all night, and she heard, you know I was listening to that last night. And the thing that stuck out to me the most was how much they spoke on all of the killings. And it was mostly, all of it was black people. Everything that was going on in the black culture, the black community, they were speaking on it because they had been on their show. Either somebody got arrested after they left the show or either they got uh, killed when they left the show, uh, you know, just after they left that show. And how much does going on these platforms like mine and every, how does that, well, it brings awareness to it, but does it really help? Well, as far as bringing awareness, but once again, uh, uh, life imitates art. And these youths cannot see down the line, like for me, it took me uh, 60, 50 years to learn the choices in life, right for wrong. But when you're out there in them streets, and this is, they see that's the only way out, they're not looking at the uh, adversities involved in getting to where you're trying, particularly in the hip hop game, to where everything seems to be a hatred, smearing, slandering, uh, and the only thing stronger than a man's pride is a mother's love. Uh, and it's just sad that uh, we as a race are hurting each other at this alarming rate. Wow, you know, and just since, since here recently here in Texas, I know y'all, and I was going to ask more of this, but I'm going to ask you, man, uh, Travis Scott, man, we had a, a tragic deal to happen out in Houston where this whole uh, concert was going on and, and they ended up blaming him uh, for these uh, situations that happened, uh, the deaths that were going on. And it's crazy how that happened, but I look at, I look at that and then I look at, I even look at Jason Aldean and what, when the people got killed up there in uh, Las Vegas and I'm like, was the same, would the same narrative be for Jason Aldean in country music as it would be for a, you know, for a, a, a Travis Scott in Houston, Texas? Well, a little insight on Travis Scott, because uh, he got canceled from the weekend in Las Vegas. I uh, seen that. Right, but uh, earlier this morning I heard from uh, my nephew, Joey Badass, who had been yeah, performing yeah, yeah. the night out there, and they had asked me was I out there to come. And uh, security is real tight, but we also have a video uh, prior to uh, the whatever trampling or whatever the outburst where the, the people that were injured and uh, uh, condolences to those, oh, those families. That, uh, family members that lost their loved ones and God's healing grace for those that are in the hospital. Because uh, like I say, I don't like to see no parent or somebody hurt. But at the end of the day, uh, a lot of times uh, you're getting castrated by the media uh, and they look for a way to take you down. But they have video where the young man had, uh, Travis Scott allegedly had uh, stopped the show to ask 
to uh, help uh, somebody prior to that way seeing somebody injured. And one thing about the law, and when we go to this, you got negligence, not intent. If this man didn't know what occurred there, for he went to an after party from my information, he didn't know nothing about it. So he's not aware of what happened. He cannot be held accountable, no more different than when Trump, they try to say Trump had yeah. him march I, up I on Washington. That. That's a good, good But good, then good nothing happened to him. Yeah. See, those with money get just us, and then it's just us. Wow, <laughs> I like that. Man, so um, that 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 was just one. What about and, and then the school shooting, right? The, the kid that took a gun to school and 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 uh, here in Texas again, um, and he was being bullied at school or whatnot, or and then they had a fight, a brawl, and then all of a sudden he uh, came out his bag and, and and shot the other kid, right? And a teacher was graced. Um, why does this anger come from, Melvin? What, what? But a lot of times it'd be go a little bit deeper than that. Not only the bullying, he's probably seeing his parent getting abused. Wow. And all type of violence and abuse. At the end of the day, it all come to, he probably see more abuse than what he's just taken uh, from being bullied at school. But also why you bring up bullying at school. Uh, why is it when these youths get bullied in school, cannot go and get an education? What is the difference in 1965 during the civil rights era when they wouldn't allow you to get an education? Mm -hmm. Segregation. And they fought for these youths, high school, colleges, for blacks to go to school. But now because of the culture and the terrain within these communities, these youths are not being given a chance to grow. Wow. And it starts from the fruit of the poisonous tree. They can't help the environment they're in. We can't blame them for the conditions they're in. We need to be builders, not destroyers. Mm. So at the end of the day, uh, I just think the youth need to be able to communicate and show that we care about them and show them a different way and create jobs for them, opportunities, because nowadays they're imprisoned in their self. In LA, you can't go 10 blocks in any direction without a rival gang. I was going to ask about that because that's something that we we have sectioned off places here. You have like uh, Pleasant Grove, you have Oak Cliff, you have different places here where people don't go to certain areas because of they don't deal with the people in those areas. But you guys are a little bit different. You guys are so it's it stretches from street to street, mm -hmm. uh, block to block. Every ten blocks, you have a, a different on the west side. Our uh, demographics are twenties the 30s, the 40s, uh, the Van Ness Boys, the uh, uh, Black Peach Stones, Five Nine Brims in the 50s, the Rolling 60s, a Trey Gangsters, uh, Hoovers, uh, uh, Inglewood Families, uh, Underground, Block, Raymond, uh, 111, Payback. Uh, you got just a litany I, my, uh, wife, my wife had asked you last time about uh, structure, right? And um, I see, uh, I always see uh, 50, Mac, 55 Crip, uh, Crip Mac. Uh, I see him a lot. I know you don't watch social media, but at the end of the day, do the do they, do, the neighborhoods, do they have any structure within that neighborhood that deal with each other because of the neighborhood that they've been in for so many years? Is there any any structure? Well, I'm going to put it like this. I'm not going to speak on other gangs. I can just tell you the difference between a, a street gang. A street gang has no structure, to whereas a prison gang has structure, a chain of command, sergeants, general, lieutenants, torpedoes, one man say something, everybody go. But when it comes to Crips and Bloods, these are street gangs. Wow. So there's, there's no one supreme leader. You just have hundreds of groups wow. of men that basically uh, draw their own uh, laws and bylaws. Mm -hmm. So there's no structure and there's a divide. But the difference, when I came into this game in 1971, uh, we were united as a whole. 
then and starting in 79, 81, when Big Rick got killed, that really separated and divided. So a lot of times our dialogues won't be the same if you sit next to me. Uh, I come from an area where everybody was united as well as seeing them when they were divided to where there was other ones that came later on. They come in basically warring with each other. Wow. Wow. So, yeah. So um, wh when is the next? I know you got you always in, in you in the pretty much into what's going on when it come down to really being about what can make a change in the community. Um, what's the next function that you guys? You, I think you told me you just said it was one. But how do you guys know when something's about to happen to try to help to promote uh, positivity in the communities throughout California? Well, uh Usually it's something that'll be on a national level. Okay. Uh, 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 like we fit to go into Charleston White later on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what we do uh, as a credible messenger, uh, our job and mission is to uh, restorative justice hey. and redefining communities. Mm. The way as we stand for our people and we uh, speak and represent our community as well as serve in our community, but more importantly, we try to help the citizens get a better quality of life that reside in these communities. Wow. So on that level, uh, we went to Columbus, Ohio, which is a bellwether state. If you do not win a Columbus, Ohio, you do not become president. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. True. So we met with the mayor, and uh, this was up on the uh, credible messenger. Me and I told him Marvin are the first to ever be certified west of the Mississippi ever. So a lot of times we take up national issues or try to bring awareness to simmer things down to where we try to give you a, a, a different point of view and then make people sit back and think and then make your decisions. But also to bring out the truth because we have so many uh, uh, Adolf Twitlers on the internet to where they'll be giving out this false propaganda. And that's why it's so important about the show that you hope it allow us uh, the chance to speak to where a lot of times our voices wouldn't be heard because we are silenced by others. So it's very important that we have a platform because one thing that I know cannot exist, and it won't exist, falsehoods and truth could never coexist on a conversation. And that's why you're having so much warn on this internet. I watched what the internet can do when they had the 100 days, 100 nights in L.A. 2015. And uh, they said they're going to kill a black every day from my side of town and back and verse. And it was one of the most despicable display of disregard for human life I ever seen in my life. Wow. wow. But how true is it that um, change can begin from at home? more than anywhere else because when I think about changing the kids it starts with the kids first of all but to me it would start with the younger kids the ones that haven't gotten out there in the gangs and on the streets and all of that because you can easily mold their thinking process show them a way out easier than someone who's already out on the street in a gang and be like who are you to tell me no I, I look up to this person I don't look up to you you know mm -hmm. what I mean so wouldn't it be easier to go to those homes to send something out there, to send somebody out there, because it's not even paperwork, because it's easier for someone to receive something if they're looking at you face-to-face -face and talking to you face-to-face. -face. Mm -hmm. So going to these homes and sitting down with some people and say, hey, this is what we can do to create a better future for you know, your child or for you. Yes, and that comes with programs and funding. So that go back to the local uh, elected officials in your community because if you see and notice uh, in these communities that are having problems uh, they're usually uh, in the same area and uh, it's usually local elected officials where they've been pr uh, practicing nepotism mm -hmm. within uh, the political world but they always ask me uh, Melvin uh, doing your life and the things you live what was uh, one of the most important things that you did wrong. And I always say, I didn't listen to my mama. Wow. I didn't listen to my mama. I remember when you said that. Mama. I remember when you said but that. But when I went to jail over these 30-something years, not one minute 
and my mama not been with me. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's so a lot of times right? you idolize a king, but I idolize God. I don't choose a king from the streets. Man will take your life. But as I sit here today as a testimony, God will give you a new life. Wow. That's true. great, man. Just the, 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 the thing I look at every time we get to talk and sit down, man, is just the fact of the wisdom and the things that you've been through, you know. Um, like I said, it, it, you can't you couldn't have wrote it out. You don't you know what I mean? Um to do uh, the time that you done spent, you know, incarcerated and to be able to be here to talk about it today. That's something that's totally extraordinary. You know what I mean? So I, I definitely appreciate you for coming on the platform because people need to see and hear cause that's when they can relate, but without it, they can't, you know what I mean? To, to hear your story and to, to hear what you are trying to accomplish in the communities with the youth and with the, with the people who are, are willing to listen. Right. Yes, sir. That, that's the that's the good part about it. You know, a lot of them not willing to listen. Mm-hmm. Um, you can't save everybody. Can't save everybody, you but ain't. you just can do whatever. Do mm-hmm. your part. If each of us did our part, it would stayed in a lane. Exactly. <laughs> but that see that be the problem in this game. They try to come in your lane and uh, uh, get up in there, whereas you wouldn't be doing that. This it's just it's sad. Yeah, it's really it's really sad at this day and time and age. But how much how much does this play a factor? Because then, and this is just my mind just thinking, you go into a community to make a change with the kids and so forth. But then, whenever you have gangs or people who are looking at these younger kids, knowing that I'm going to recruit them for my gang, but here you are trying to, you know, help them to tour to the tour. You now become my problem. Mm Hmm. Is that reality? That's reality. This is a game where when you make a mistake, you get killed. The same way you go say, I'm sorry, uh, I didn't mean it. They take it very personal. Wow. So that, very, personal. very personal. Do you, you know, when you think about the um, just, just the times that we're in, um, the games that are being played, the, the technology, that the, the, the video games I'm talking about, they sit all day now. It's not like it used to be. They don't go outside to, uh, you know, we used to have a, a slingshot. You know, you remember slingshot? Mm-hmm. I, I had a slingshot when I was a little boy. And then I'd make one with a rubber band and stick to mm-hmm. the country. But we had, we, didn't do, we, we loved doing stuff like that. I climb, I, I'm country, so I would climb trees and hang out and, you know what I mean, um, play wrestling after wrestling went off. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Play basketball after basketball went off. Um, play football after football went off. We don't really see this a lot anymore like we used to. Um, people are consumed by their environment of being in a house or on a video game, and, and they refuse to even go out like that. The street lights you don't have to worry about them being out in the street lights because they're somewhere in the house cooped up uh, in a room playing a video game. Or, or, you know, basically that's about it for me, from what I see at the, with the youth, you know. So it's a lot different than what it used to be. But then at some point you see them because they've been playing with those, uh, those, those games with the guns on it, they, they end up making that a reality somewhere down the line. They know all the names of the guns mm-hmm. before, they even, before, before they even leave the house. Yeah. You know that, right? Yes, sir. This, this is what's on the game. Mm-hmm. And, and so how do you parent that? I mean, how do you help that? And then when you do get out and go to the schools or whatever, you do hear about the gangs and the stuff that's going on. So you just mix it all up. It's a mix. You parent your kids by educating them of the consequences of, you know, certain actions that they take. And, of course, you cannot – we can control our kids, but you can't always control your kids. You, they have to go to school. So when they leave, their, leave your house to go wherever, you hope that's where they're going. And even when they go to school, they still do things in the school. So you can't always be there with them. You know, so as parents, we always say, you know, just pray for your kids. Always pray for your kids. Never stop right. praying for them. Because you can't, that's the only person that can be there by their size 24 7. Right. It's God. Right. Mm-hmm. True. I mean, that's different than when you came up. Right. What? No, no video games. No, none of that. Nah, Straight we didn't street. have no video back, games. Fix a bicycle, uh, right? With four and eight track. Uh, they was doing drive-bys on a bicycle, man. <laughs> See what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, different uh, world. It was a whole different world. And you had a little bit more freedom. Uh, you had, uh, if you played, I grew up playing sports. 
and we got away from it to make revenues because usually uh, these like ABC Market, uh, 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 Golden Bird Chicken, Boys Market, these type of businesses used to support single families, uh, low income families uh, doing baseball season to wear McDonald's would buy the uniforms and they had a logo on there. You win, we'll go get a hamburger, french fries and Cokes. That was at the Cardinals in 69. But we don't got away from that uh, to where uh, we have th these, these parents and this uh, video game, a lot of times these single parents, the video game has become the babysitter. Correct. And the teacher. And they don't pay attention to what their kids watching or doing. So the cell phone raising. Mm -hmm. The cell phone. It's like the new babysitter. They quiet. They ain't going nowhere. Like, she can go or it, whoever. It's, it's That's a, from a single parent. It replaced the pacifier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It <laughs> quiets them. So... <laughs> That's that, that and that's that's a, that's good to it's it's crazy but it's so true you know what I mean it quiets them it soothes them it soothes them and 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 so let me ask you this because I wanted to ask you this because I didn't get to ask you last time when Tuki Tuki Williams when he passed were you locked up during that time when he was you know when when or well, where were you at uh when Tuki was on his last two weeks his lawyers Barbara Becknell. Uh, this other lady out of Richmond or something because I knew about the case, so I had to fill out an affidavit because I had uh, some newly discovered uh, evidence where they wanted to hear my side of a, uh, my testimony on a sworn affidavit. So uh, once they closed the prison down on a Sunday and shut down to where after the visiting uh, was on a Sunday, it ended at about 3.00. Five o'clock, they called me up into the visiting room uh, to talk to his attorneys and fill out the affidavit. So now uh, that was on a Sunday. Tookie got executed that Wednesday. Okay. So once I uh, filled out the affidavit and they left immediately, uh, I had a gate pass at that time. They took that, took me off and made it uh, where I couldn't work no more. And uh, didn't give me uh, place me up under pretty strict uh, restrictions. Wow! So uh, we we're waiting on the decision from the Supreme Court. You had the option of the uh, governor signing a clemency, or you had the Supreme Court, which could overturn uh, the conviction on what we had filed. Because you also had uh, uh, some white guys that were in uh, high power with him that had uh, testified that when he said certain things, he was high on drugs, and this, now they were recanting. So you had uh, three affidavits, I believe, and then one of them was mine. And uh, unfortunately, they, they, I think they aired in my affidavit, uh, which could have spared his life, and I think that's where the error occurred. Wow, so, and, and, and yeah, man, I, so, and, and and I knew that you. you so how what, how what was the atmosphere like? Because you were you were locked up during this time. Yeah. Um, what was the atmosphere like after they executed uh, Tookie? Well, uh, prior to them executing Tookie, what happens is they lock everybody down twenty four hours before an execution. Because you got to remember, uh, they just had started back. Very few people have been executed. In fact, Tookie. Uh, in 2005, I believe, has been basically almost the last one to be uh, executed in the state of California. Wow. But in other states, they do. But uh, at that time, it was like, it wasn't no, like the uh, tension and its media grabbing and its talk, because you talking uh, where Tookie had been gone since 1979, uh, when he was arrested, so that's 21 and about five. So Tookie had been gone 26 years, so uh, it's an attitude that you have in prison on them uh, yards to where uh, it was understood but not accepted. And uh, if it wasn't going to be no moves on the police behind it, no retaliation, uh, it just was a sad thing. But also Tretch and Evil, 
who wrote the books with him, Adisa and Ajani, uh, that are still on death row, they locked them up for eight years wow. in solitary confinement behind wow. Tookie execution to where they had to do a hunger strike uh, to get off those conditions uh, that were set forth behind Tookie's execution. Wow. So when I think, because I, I remember during that time, Snoop Dogg was uh, really, you know, in the media trying to uh, press for change, of course. Um, when you think about Snoop Dogg and all the, st the times that he's been uh, – um, pushing the Crip narrative, uh, how, what type of influence did that have on gang culture in California? Well, Snoop is just one of many in an era that has uh, influence on the gang culture. He's been around. He's a veteran. See, the West Coast is not the same as the East Coast where they spit knowledge. we got a different uh, 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 mentality and the way our get down is in the state of California. Nobody does it like California, particularly when it comes to this banging. Many emulate, but until you come to the land, the Comptons, the Long Beach, uh, and these areas uh, that are uh, infested with these uh, community influencers, then you'll get a real taste of what this game is all about, and I promise you, I promise you, you ain't gonna wanna come back. So when it comes to Snoop, it's been a lot of influences, uh, uh, starting back with NWA, mm -hmm. uh, uh, who always, mm -hmm. Ice Cube. Ice Cube. Uh, but nobody's been more influential to me than Michael Conception. Okay. As far as coming from. And I know from, you said that. Yeah. yeah, I grew up with Mike. Yeah. When he was walking and then when he got, I watched him. I was part of Grand Jury Records when they first uh, started him, Fred, uh, 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 Hot Dog, uh, uh, and this other boy, uh, Steve Goods. Uh, Tookie was married to his sister Michelle okay. at the time that he was done. And Mike does a lot uh, good in the community and back door through a lot of mediary works when these artists or things occur to where it has to be handled privately. Big U, uh, he's in the game now, Whack. So a lot of these guys have had influence, but a lot of times they, not they, people exploit this culture mm -hmm. for financial gain. Yeah, it, it just kind of threw me off. Like even with Nipsey Hussle, and I know we spoke briefly about him last time, but for somebody that was in the same game, and I don't know if he was in the same, I don't know the whole gamut of it, but to be in the same uh, to be a crip and kill a crip was is it, just beyond me. I at first, but with it being so many different names and streets, and it, I could see how it happened. But it's just a tragic thing to see that happen like that, especially in front of his store, which me and my wife visited. And I said, I don't know if I said that last time, but we visited that store because it's like our store. We we that was when I would go to California. I would go to Nipsey's store. As you come in here, you see why, because I did the same thing. I've been there 15 years. Mm -hmm. So when me and my wife would go up there, we'll go by there. You know what I mean? And so when that happened that day, to see him kill, I've had people to say stuff to me in this in this same parking lot over the years, and I wouldn't say certain things because I knew that what I say whole weights because they know, they look at you like, oh, you think you're somebody because you're a business owner. So there's certain ways I wouldn't say things. I would, I would, uh, you know I've told you that, mm -hmm. and we've done this for many days. I would turn it down because I didn't want the, it's like an amplified thing when I say something versus when just a regular guy out there say something. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. So I think that's the, uh, I think that's the whole, uh, the whole, uh, um, um, the thing that stuck out the most for me. Cause everybody, when they dealing with something like that, it's going to affect them in a different way. Right. A lot of people can't say that they spoke with him. I actually spoke with him. I actually spoke to his daddy. I spoke to his brother. You know, when I, when I went, I'm, I'm just telling you, and we take pictures, I, I ain't even put them up, but I got them. But it just threw me off for that to happen like it did with someone in the same, you know, game and don't know the area they lived in, but I do know they happened to be on that same parking lot that day. How does that happen? Do that happen often that Crips kill Crips? Well, yeah. Crips kill Crips. Remember I said when I come in, we were united. Yeah. Now they're divided. And uh, I got a saying that uh, 
any race will kill us because of the color of our skin, but blacks only get at blacks because of the areas that they stay in. Wow. Over 50 years of this, now they're strangers mm -hmm. to each other. These youths, 14 up to 20, 22, they've never been able to uh, uh, come together to create dialogue, to know if they like each other or whatever, male or female or whatever. So over this time, and we're in this same little area, and once again, I told you, every 10 blocks, mm -hmm. you have a different clique, a wow. different set. So, and I mean, these borderlines are like crossing over into Beirut, Afghanistan. You might can wear a tea hat on this side of that door. But once you cross on that other side of that door, I don't think you're going to make it two blocks wearing it. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. So, man, I didn't held him longer than what I posed to, but I just enjoyed talking to you, man. I ain't going to lie to you. Yes, sir. I, I don't know, man. I thank God you know people. You know what I mean? Yes, And sir. I know he did, the, he, he did me a deal with you. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I feel the same way. <laughs> I'm being real. I yeah. come to Cali tomorrow. You call me. I promise you. I'm yeah, coming. You're like, hey, man. I'm calling. Hey, if you I'm ask coming. me now to get back walking, I'll be here next Christmas walking. <laughs> Say, we're going to get back, it together, man. man. Make hey, it happen, man. man. Thank you so much, man. If it's something we can do together, like I said, we have clothing stores. If it's a kid in need or something, you know of, because you know a lot of people, and I know you plugged in in every way. Give us an opportunity to help. If we yeah. have to send a case of shoes, if we have to send some you know, some clothes or whatever to help somebody. We always got that door open. That's why we've been here. All so right, while we at it, uh, give a plug. We're going to have a turkey giveaway also uh, at Father's a Hip Hop uh, uh, Awards show uh, the 21st of uh, November at the Adelanto Stadium in Adelanto, California. Uh, we have Busy Bone. We have uh, 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 Justified from a uh, uh, lynch mob. We got uh, Freeway Rick. We got Bobby Lou. We got Cornell Ward. We got Melvin Farmer. We got Barefoot Pookie. Uh, we got uh, Terry, uh, Ice Cube Manager. We got Ice Cube. Hey. Ice T. Ice, Ice T. T. Yeah. That's the uh, ice cube, uh, iced tea. Ice tea. As long as you got some uh, ice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, if you'd like to uh, donate uh, some turkeys or something, we, we're sure. trying to get up to 500 uh, to give the community. Or come on out and you can support by buying tickets and coming to the award show. And they also have a premiere of a documentary uh, called uh, World Epidemic, uh, where they're addressing senseless gun violence across uh, the United States and other uh, places. So it's going to be exciting, fun for you. Wow, man. And what day is that? November 21st. November 21st. We're going to be in ATL, but mm -hmm. yeah, I'm going to call out there and mess with him and try to get me. I'm on my, they cash app now. You can cash app. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't have one. Anymore, so <laughs> I, don't I love it. You, no you cash don't even mess yeah. with none of that no, stuff. I don't know what no cash. Hey, man. Hey, hey, Melvin, man. We love you, brother. All right. And I love you. Thank you so much thank for coming you, on the show, thank man. Thank you for having me, man. Hey, man. God it's, bless everybody. Hey, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. We ain't out. No, we ain't. CEO, man.